We are going to talk about um, hooping, stabilizer, topper, uh, several things, and there are some alternative options you might be able to use, uh, or you might choose to use uh, when doing towels. But let me show you what I do and why I do it this way. So first let me show you a stitched towel. Here's what I did last night. I wanted to have something that you could see. And this is um, the current alphabet that I'm releasing. We are on letter um, U, I believe, at the moment. And this one coordinates with the latest design, which is the uh, medallion, the wet work linen medallion, and also the white work linen uh, border. And the little rose comes from the border uh, mini set, which is the little scallop. you can put on either side of the medallion or you can put the scallop on either side of this monogram so they're designed to go together and so here's the um, the arrangement that I did for a towel I just put the medallion here and these are just up to the edge of the medallion on either side of it and then of course the hand towel has the monogram to go with it and the little washcloth. I threw the little rose in because the washcloths, I, I don't really like a big um, design on those because you want these to be usable. So um, I just thought the little rose would be really pretty as a nice touch. And I put it up here above the border, uh, the decorative border here. But I probably, uh, you could put it above the border or you could put it here or you can put it in the corner. Uh, that's really up to you. There are some um, guidelines as far as placement for embroidery designs on whether it's towels or logos or, or the center of a t-shirt and, and on and on and on. Um, when I did the pink ones, I, I just quickly looked it up to see how far up I should do my border on the bath towel. And, you know, the rule said either four inches from the bottom or two inches above the, the decorative border. So I thought, okay, I'll do two inches above the decorative border. Although that seemed a little high to me. And once I did it, I thought if I were doing it again, I would do it right on the border, uh, right on the edge of the, um, this decorative border. And um, so there you go. You don't have to follow rules. I should have gone with my gut and uh, put it on the edge here but I mean it's still pretty and I could still add something decorative here with the with the matching pink to go here and it looks like yes I thought I had it inside out no this is this is actually let me show you the back of the design this towel came out of the dryer literally about 45 minutes ago I don't pre-wash my towels. I stitch them and then if they're going as a gift, I'll show you how, how I stitch them so they look pretty and, and without washing them. But if it's something I'm going to keep, I just I embroider them and then I wash them so that they're ready for use. Here's the back of the embroidery. So it's nice and clean, not a bunch of jump stitches because there aren't any jump stitches in these designs. And I do press my embroidery on my towels. I just like to set the threads so that uh, they kind of find a home in the uh, fibers of the towel. And I think the embroidery lasts, stays nicer longer when you press it. So there's the, ta the pink towel version. That one's a keeper since I'm not crazy about how high up I put my border. And, uh, and here's the matching monogram uh, uh, hand towel. I did not have any washcloths for this particular set, so I actually went out and bought some towels to make this uh, 
the uh, uh, oatmeal color version, which was this, so that I could have a complete set to show you. All right, so here's what I do for town. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask them because um, I'm more likely to answer them here and now than later on down, you know, a few months from now is when you're watching you, the YouTube videos. We have a couple that are saying they're having trouble with their screen. You might try refreshing your screen or you may even need to use a, a different browser. So uh, that might help with uh, showing the video. And it, it, yeah, sometimes the devices don't show it, right? I mean, the videos don't show up on, uh, can, sometimes my Kindle doesn't play a video or I, I, there's so many devices. I'm, I'm amazed it plays at all in, in most people's um, browsers. All right, so the first thing I do for hooping towels, or not hooping towels, for stitching towels, is I, I tend not to hoop the towel. Um, it's just so bulky and you have to be perfect with your placement and um, uh, as far as where you want the design to be and it's a little bit trickier to get that just right in the hoop. So what I do is I hoop water-soluble mesh type stabilizer and I hoop one layer um, in the same method that I hoop for lace and that is and I'm using I'm showing you my large hoop here because I combined my my medallion with the two uh, side borders in one hoop so that I didn't have to re-hoop it three times those of you with the uh, four inch hoops and nothing bigger um, this is the same method you would use for, for um, uh, hooping a smaller design. So um, I'm showing you on the big hoop, but um, you use the same method for the small hoop. And then I'll show you another, another option um, as, uh, that instead of using this, you have another choice. Okay, so this is just regular Vylene or uh, water-soluble um, Mesh type stabilizer comes by many names, but I think they're identical. So I hoop that. My hoop is not very pretty, and if you watched my stitching how to stitch lace video, um, I tell you that clean hoops are not my friend. And um, I have a brand new hoop like this that I haven't used yet. Uh, when I get to it, I'm actually gonna probably prep it and do some things to it to make it tacky in a good way and um, uh, that way when I when I put my stabilizer in the hoop it won't slide on me because there's just no way to fight a clean slippery hoop and these stabilizers are slippery on their own they don't need help to slip and slide so this hoop yes uh, I was just going to say, uh, Sherry says she has a large order of towels to do today, and she almost forgot about the video. She's a tax preparer and still has a lot of returns to do, but she's dropped them to watch your video. Oh, so my goodness. Thank you, Sherry. We thank all of you that are watching. We have several watching. Thank you, Sherry, and I hope you find it useful. That was worth every minute for you, and I'll try to be as thorough. So if you have any questions, if you think I missed something, just please be sure and ask. Okay, so what I was going to say is um, my hoops, if you watch my uh, How to Stitch Lace, I explained to you how I got my hoop like this. And this is actually the Vylene uh, stabilizer, the water soluble, but it's the tacky version. And this is like this because I've used this hoop for um, my Sorry about that. I wondered what would happen if somebody tried to call us because those, these live videos have to be done on a phone. So um, uh, I wondered about, I almost warned everybody in the family, don't call me, but I thought, oh well, I think you'll be okay. It was just a phone call and, and so whoever's calling me, please be aware, we will not be answering for a while. All right, so this is the Vylene Tacky version, which is like this. And it has a paper backing. You peel it away, it's like a sticker. So it's tacky on the back side where you peel, peel the paper away. The paper is just protecting that tackiness. 
And so when I do my napkin corners with the cutaway at the corner, um, um, and actually the, um, there's a video on how to do those uh, napkin corners. It's called the Pretty Acorns uh, Corner. Um, it's the same technique for all the corners, so that even though that's the acorn design, uh, it's the same technique. And it sh I show you how to hoop this, and, and I'll kind of run through um, and show you how I, I do it uh, on this video. But I built up several layers of this, so whenever I was done with the napkin corner, I would just trim this away around the inside of my hoop and leave this here because it occurred to me that this would help to uh, hold my hoop together and, and grab the stabilizer whenever I have stabilizer hooped in here. So that's exactly why I leave it like this. So my hoops are not the prettiest, shiniest things you've ever seen, but they work for me and because shiny hoops don't help me. These hoops do. So I have the same thing I've done here. So for this I've used, uh, I think I've done it for bodices, the petite boutique bodices are done with the tacky stabilizer. So I've, I've got some leftover in my hoop, so when I was done, I just cut the excess out of the uh, perimeter of the hoop and left my layers of stabilizer here. So these help to hold my stabilizer in place. It gives it some traction, something to, and, the, and it's a little bit cushiony, so uh, it squeezes that stabilizer and holds it tight for me. Also, um, when I hoop this um, stabilizer for um, towels, I will go ahead and spray this very lightly with the embroidery spray adhesive. I take it outside. I don't do that inside here. Uh, I actually walk downstairs, out the back door, spray it out there, and come back up here. And, and, and you only need a light mist, but you do need to cover all the corners, especially, because you want your towel to stick to those corners. You don't want it to start peeling away and, and shifting in the hoop. So, um, I sometimes will purposely spray the inner side of my hoop as well. And so that helps when I pull my stabilizer. Now once I hoop this, I turn my hoop over and pull my stabilizer tight. I don't want to pull too hard because this stabilizer will tear. And as I was preparing this hoop for the video, I actually tore it right here. But it's not the end of the world. There's enough stabilizer here, it'll hold together for me because there is good grip inside here, the way I've got it set up. If this was a brand new slippery hoop, forget it. That would not work. So I've actually slit my stabilizer here so that I can pull it through right here. I just want it to hold all the way around as best as I can get it. And because I've sprayed the inside here to make it tacky, then I can Pull this tight and tack it down against my hoop like this. So I've gone around and I've pulled it tight this way like this. So my fingers are against the hoop and I'm pulling, pulling down with my thumb and forefinger like this. And then I tack it down. And I just keep working all the way around until it's nice and secured. And then these corners, I usually cut these off because I don't want this to get in the way of my towel being held down. So I've sprayed this to make it tacky. I don't want this corner to be covering the tacky area where my towel needs to, to be secured. So that's what I do is I go all the way around, secure my stabilizer, because you don't want any of this to shift or slip and slide and get loose when the machine is stitching. And these bigger hoops are a bigger challenge because you have a lot more uh, flexibility in the stabilizer uh, because it's such a big piece. So you want to make sure you need to pull gently, but it, you need to keep pulling until it's nice and firm to the touch. And this could probably use a little bit more, but I'm not going to take the time to do it right now. I do cut the corners off, like I said, to make sure that they don't get in the way of my towel sticking. And 
there you go. So here we go. This hoop is, I'm pretending that I've sprayed it. So I could actually, because of the way it's sitting, I do this quite often. I actually use my cutting book mat with the lines. I can see right through my stabilizer. I can see the lines and everything. So I line up my hoop so that the centers are on a, are lined up with the lines on my, the mat, the grid. So I can actually just take this right here, take my pencil and draw my line for the center, for the center. Um, if I know I'm gonna push a design, um, like when I did my, my border on the, when I did this, I happen to know that the width of the stitching area, not the hoop area, but the actual stitching field in this large hoop is almost eight inches wide. And this design is only, it's less than four inches tall. Yes. Mary wants to know the size of your hoop. This is the, this is what's called the eight by 12. It's um, for my uh, multi-needle uh, deco. So it's the 200 by 300, I believe. It's all covered up, I'm sorry. But it's like, it's actually, it's not exactly eight by 12. It's like seven and point seven, not seven five, like 7.8. It's just about a 10th or, or two tenths, less than eight inches. And it's like at 11 and point eight or point nine inches. So it's just a couple of hairs short of eight by 12. Now I happen to know that this would fit in half of that hoop. So I push the design all the way to the edge. And since I don't, and, and when you get into, I'm not gonna get into all the details of, um, I'm just gonna give you a couple of tips. You can actually put your hoop on the machine, put your design, like push it all the way to the end of your hoop or wherever you want, if you wanted to do more than one towel in a big hoop. Um, and, you know, be cautious because the towels are heavy and they'll start pulling and causing a lot of drag on your hoop. So if you have like a single needle machine, um, those hoops are only being held by one, one uh, mechanism, one, one, uh, I don't know what, one bracket, I guess. Um, these, you can kind of get away with more weight because it's being held by two sides and they're pretty strong. So, um, but with the single needle machines, you have one, one lock over here and it's maneuvering the entire hoop. And so if you put, you know, I don't know what this weighs, and then if you add another towel, and that's a lot of drag, and, and the hoop is gonna maybe not register properly as it's stitching your design. So, but you, what you can do is you can actually get a, uh, put this on your machine, and when you do the tracing or the placement on the machine of where your design is gonna go, you can actually see right through where the needle is gonna penetrate you could mark where the perimeter of that design is. So that's all I did is I put this on the machine and I, I scooped the, my design configuration all the way to one side. And then I had the machine show me where the, where the uh, bottom left is, bottom center, bottom right. I just marked it and I just laid, I knew I wanted this to be just above my little decorative uh, border. So I just placed the, the line just a hair below that that line that was traced out for me by the machine and so it made placement pretty easy uh, it's just a tip because you can see through the stabilizer you could do that for easy placement or easier placement um, okay so this is all um, sprayed and everything um, you find where you're gonna put your towel let me do it um, with the other, <clears throat> the opposite end of my towel. When you embroider, you wanna make sure your tag is at the opposite end of your embroidery. So of course you wanna make sure you're embroidering on the front side of your towel, but also the other end opposite from your tag. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna use the other unembroidered end. 
So you want to fold your towel wrong side out and find the middle. And if you know where your design is going to go, and you've got your line drawn. Of course, you can use your templates. Every hoop comes with a template, and you can figure out where your design is with the template, etc. I think most of us have used our templates at one time or another. So you just find it, and sometimes if, if it's unruly and it's just every time I move it, my edges shift, I'll pin this just to hold it until I get it in my hoop. So I'll, I have my middle here. I'll place it on my center line or wherever it is I'm gonna I'm gonna be embroidering. And then I just press it down onto this tacky surface that I've sprayed. And I, I don't trust, the tackiness is helpful, but it's not a sure thing. So I hold it down, pick up the top, hold that down underneath, and then finish, finish laying this down. This is moving around because I haven't really sprayed this. Yes. Judy is asking a very popular question. She wants to know where you get your towels. I knew somebody was going to ask me that. That's why I kept the tag. <laughs> Okay, believe it or not, the, and these are really nice. Well, let me finish this, and then I'll tell you where I got this towel. I'll put it right here so I don't forget. Okay, so I've got half of my towel placed, and I'm double-checking. I'm walking my line down that pencil line that I drew, and I use pencil on my stabilizer. I try not to mark my projects with those... Uh, water soluble pens or disappearing inks or I don't trust those and I don't want to find out after I spent all my time and effort and energy and getting something pretty done to find out that for some reason that wa that pen mark is not washing away so I don't use them um, so I'll use pencil um, if I really need to mark something on my towel and I can't see it, I'll put some tape, um, like scotch tape, the kind you can write on. I'll just put a piece of tape right there and I'll put my little crosshair right there if I need to, right on top of my towel. And then I just peel off the tape when I'm done. Um, so I walk this down. The, the towels are easy because you've got these borders. But if you didn't, I would go ahead and just mark it with a pencil, a regular number two pencil, because that washes out. Okay, so I walk it down, walk it down, make sure my lines are straight, tack it down. And like I said, my hoop isn't actually sprayed, so it's not gonna stick for real, but this is what it would look like. So my design border would stitch out right here like I did last night. This is the top side of my towel because I had had it folded wrong side out. All right. And uh, just to be sure, I'll sometimes peel this back to make sure nothing shifted. See, my hoop is a little tacky, so it is sticking to the hoop, but not to the stabilizer. So I might walk this back just a little, make sure my line really was secured while I was placing the right side or this side. And then, I'm good to go. Um, okay, so before I go on, these towels, these have kind of a little bit of a, I don't, because we have to do these live videos with our phones, we have to uh, live with the quality, quality of the video, which is actually very good, I think. But I wish we could have crystal clarity with their, our videos, but I love doing the live videos more than recorded videos. I was just telling Gary that earlier. I don't know why I'm more at ease talking to real people than doing a video pretending to be talking to people. I, I don't know what it is, but I just love talking to, to actually be talking to you all out there. So anyway, so to do live videos, we have to use the, uh, the phone and do it that way. Um, this towel has a little bit of um, like a stamped little um, almost like a waffle weave pattern. Can you see? Yeah. 
It's really a pretty towel. Yes. Jennifer wants to know if you embroider above the border. Yes, I embroidered right above the border, right here. Just on the edge of this decorative border. And I'm thinking what I, I'm going to do, because it's still such a big space. I didn't want to embroider on top of the border because this is this is a really nice cotton and it's a little bit heavier cotton it's almost like a rope um, pattern down the 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 uh, stripes here i really didn't know how that would affect the way the embroidery would stitch out because it's you know there's terry and fluffiness and then there's this rope pattern and and then it's got little um um dips in the uh, little like a dental um, pattern here like the dental patterns you find on cabinets so I didn't I didn't want to mess up the embroidery by doing all these different um, surfaces here so I chose to do it up here and I think what I might do is um, uh, go back on my regular sewing machine and maybe stitch a couple of rows of, of uh, decorative stitches right in here to just kind of balance it a little bit better and I mean I think it looks great like this but if I wanted to I could just take this color and just stitch a couple of decorative lines right in here or add some ribbon that matches or just get creative with it um, this these towels we picked them up um, yesterday actually they're from Kroger those of you who have Kroger we have a really huge Kroger over here, just a mile from here. These are called Living Green Organic Towels. They were like $8.99 or $7.99, something like that. But they're really nice towels, and I really needed them. They were there, and bird in the hand. So I don't, I don't usually have time to shop for bargains, but I thought that for organic towels, cotton towels, um, I thought these were really, really nice. So, even though they have that little um, uh, weave pattern, the embroidery came out just fine. So, no need to fear if there's a pattern in the towel as opposed to a regular terry towel. Did you pre-wash? Oh, um, no, I do not pre-wash my towels. Um, I did not pre-wash these. I, I embroidered and then I washed them and pressed them. Um, if I was to give this as a gift, I would not wash it because it, um, you might not be able to tell the difference actually, but um, for something like this, and I'll, tell, I'll, I'll show you how to do it so it doesn't look like it's not finished, you know, so you don't have all this ugliness on the back uh, for gift for presentation. So um, uh, if you do it this way, you'll be good. You don't have to pre-wash towels. I've never pre-washed my towels. I just have never seen the need to do it, and it has never failed me not to do it. So they always wash up just fine. Um, okay, so I've got, oh, Lost track of where my end was here. All right, so I've got my towel in the hoop. Next thing is I put down, oh, and I seem to not have wide enough salvy, but I'll show you what you can do. My design is really, it was this one. So my salvy was big enough to you want your salvi your topper to be at least a couple of inches bigger than your design because um it the machine can start to buckle it and and grab it and and do things you just want to make sure there's enough there so it doesn't accidentally get pulled in too tight and and miss around the edges um so i would put this down in my stitching area. In this case, I'm not embroidering this whole area, so this is wide enough. If it weren't wide enough, I would do two layers, but then you have to, you know, one on each side. 
but you have to make sure you secure that center part because you don't want that embroidery foot to get caught on it as it's stitching. But there is another solution for, or there is a way to, to make sure that doesn't happen as well. So I'll show you what I'm, my other step. So you put this down. I use regular um, scotch tape. Take a piece, do the corners, and um, I might actually go, I take that back, I go farther, way farther than the edge of the hoop. Because when the machine is moving the hoop and feeling the size and scoping things out before it starts stitching, I don't want this these edges to get caught under the foot, especially if you have a multi-needle machine, because even though uh, uh, the needle that's tracing the design, it may be number four, you've got other needles out here that could get caught, and feet, needles and presser feet, that could get caught, so it's just good to have a little excess going beyond where the machine might travel, because you don't want needles and things getting caught on those, on those edges. So I would put this down, cut that off, um, secure it with tape, and you know, just a couple of pieces out here, maybe a couple here and a couple here. And then I use, this is, oh yes. Regina is asking if you use only one layer of violin on the hoop. One layer is all you need because you actually are, it's not like stitching lace, because lace, um, that's all you have to stitch on. That is your fabric. Yes. And Sharon wants to know where you get your stabilizer. Um, my stabilizer thus far, the violin, the regular violin, the um, my tearaways, um, and I think my Salvi. I got it all. I think from All Stitch. All Stitch dot net. I believe I order it by like the rolls and so they last me I just reordered violin like last year and I had that same roll for about eight years so it took me about eight years to reorder violin I think I had ordered a hundred yards or something 30 inches wide and they have a really good price so um, I, I recommend all stitch and I think if you buy a certain amount shipping is free or at least it used to be so um, I they're a good company and I recommend them um, so this is the kind of tool that you make uh, bridal veils out of it's not necessarily although there is illusion illusions a little fancier and this is just tool so they do sell tool by the yard but if you can get rolls that are, I don't know how wide they go with the rolls, but if you can get away with the roll, um, like on spools, I recommend that because the tool by the yard is a pain to deal with. So um, anyway, this is a piece from my uh, stash that's by the yard. It's, it's just a pain. It's invisible. Try and cutting, trying to cut the stuff and you can't see it. But you need to have this to, uh, if you have an open design like, like these, where you have a lot of open detail, um, I recommend using the tool because then, uh, uh, I mean, it's, there's no law that says you, you have to use the tool, but it does help keep the nap down so your design doesn't get all lost in, in the, um, the loops of the towel. So depending on how open or how filled in the design is, you, you might decide you don't need the tool. Um, but for these open work type designs, I, I like to use the tool. It just, it keeps everything under control. And if you're stitching a, um, uh, the, the tool that comes on spools comes in different colors. So if you're stitching something dark, you might want to get a color that's you know blends so the idea is to you won't be able to match the color exactly but it will blend if it's a, if it's near that color because the stuff's almost invisible so um, so you put this on top this is the way I do it I put the tool on top of the solving 
and I will tell you why. Because um, when I was learning how to do towels, um, I was taught to just put the tool down and then put some salvy down and then, you know, and everything was just great until it was time to trim the tool. And then you had to contend with your scissors getting caught in the loops of the towel and it, it just made it really challenging. You can't just tear this off because, I mean, it can tear, but it can damage the stitches at times. Yes. Judy wants to know if the tool has big or tiny holes. This is really tiny, like the kind you would make, you make uh, veils out of. So it's pretty fine. It's pretty common. You'll find this just about anywhere. Hobby Lobby, Joann's, any craft store will have, um, will have tool. And this is just a polyester, I think nylon. I'm not really sure what it's made of. It's anybody who, who sells fabric or crafts will be able to tell you where to find it. So once you have this down, it's very important that you secure this. So I secure it with, with tape, but I also, um, last night I went ahead and uh, took a needle and thread and just through the towel loops, as much as I could grab, I just took some big stitches, you know, like inch stitches with, with a hand needle and thread. I just went and held it down because this stuff will get eaten up by the machine as it's stitching and it'll start shifting and puckering. So you want to secure it. Yes. Judy wants to know if you cut it off around the design, the tool. Once it stitches, uh, oh yeah, I'll get to that in just a second. But just make sure this, like the Solvi, is outside of the hoop because this too will get caught on the presser feet. So, uh, Okay, let me ask Judy, uh, answer Judy's question really quick. Yes, you do trim this, and I'll show you how to do it because I have one that's ready for trimming. I will show you how to trim the tool away from the design. Yes. A couple other questions. Grace wants to know if the excess tool comes off when the stabilizer dissolves, and Yo-Yo wants to know, is the tool used as a stabilizer? The tool does not dissolve because this is a nylon. It's actually a fabric. It will remain and it will hold down those loops um, from the towel so that your, your design is a little more smooth and, and doesn't get lost in the loft. Um, so if you don't want, I mean, if you don't want to use the tool, that's perfectly fine. And, but the tool kind of stabilizes but not really it's more to hold down the loops yes. and linda wanted to know if you use tool on everything or just towels uh no just towels um or, or uh let's see what what else would you use tool i don't think i've used tool on anything else other than towels um i suppose in some creative project if you needed to hold the fur down or whatever it is um you could use tool but um uh, in general, I think it's just used for this kind of thing to, to hold the towel loops, the terry cloth down and keep it under control so your design doesn't disappear into that fluffiness. Um, all right, so this is secured at the edges. Baste it if possible. And if uh, some of you have uh, built-in basting frames in your machines, so um, you could just Tell the machine I want an 8x12 basting frame on this thing, and you're good to go. Yes. And Judy wants to know if she can use a temporary spray adhesive instead of tacking it down. Um, I don't use the, the adhesive on this because what happens is, uh, this is, this is almost not there. So when you spray this side, the spray goes to the front as well. So, uh... It could cause a problem with it sticking to the uh, embroidery foot as it comes down. That might cause a problem. So um, I, I would say it's probably better just to use tons of tape and pins or whatever you have to use. Um, but it, basting is probably the safest way because what happens is the machine starts stitching and as the, the hoop starts moving, it starts to pucker and stretch and, and cause ripples and and 
I mean, sticking your hand in there to straighten it out doesn't work because it's there's all kinds of, it's like a four-way stretch in the tool. And once it's out of control, you kind of have to live with it. And thankfully, it's almost invisible. So if it puckers on you and it gets stitched down that way, um, don't worry about it. It's, it's probably not even going to show. But it's just something to be aware of and be prepared for so that um, if it does happen, uh, you'll know how to fix it next time. Or you can at least prevent it if, you, if you're willing to do that. So basting is the best way. Um, and like I said, some machines have built-in basting, basting stitches. Uh, some of my designs come with basting stitches. So let me show you what happens when you're all done stitching. Oh, and when you take this to the machine, be careful that you're carrying your towel. You're holding the weight of your towel because if you let it hang and you're dragging it along, it's going to start pulling that towel out of your hoop. And oh, and I did forget to tell you. Once because the this the tackiness is holding the towel down, but it's not going to hold it permanently while it's stitching. You do need to secure it with pins. Um, because my hoop is like the way it is, I'm able to pin right to the edge of my hoop. So I can take, well done. Okay, so I can take pins and actually just stick them into my stabilizer right here like this. The only thing is you want to make sure that none of these pins are going to be in the way of your feet, machine feet. Can you see that? Right here, right here, and they're kind of, they're secured, so you're pinning way outside the stitching field. You can pin on heat, like in this one, since I know my design doesn't go beyond this line, I could pin down in here. Um, but you're trying to pin your towel to your stabilizer, so that makes it a little more difficult because you can push the pin through, but it's hard to get it to come back up through the towel. So that's why I pin to my, to my stabilizer out here. But you can pin to the towel. I mean, before my, my hoop was fixed up like this, I did have to pin to the bottom of my hoop. And it can be done. You just don't want to loosen your stabilizer too much as you're trying to do that see so you want to pin but just be sure it's all outside of your you do not want your needle to hit those pins so not just your needle but the presser foot as it comes down you just don't want it to slam against one of those pins that are in the way you might damage something so okay so that's preparation for your towel for uh, stitching now, get this out of my way. And so you want to carry your towel, support the weight, support everything as you're putting it on the machine. And make sure everything's folded and out of your way, out of the machine's way. Make sure there's nothing pinched underneath the hoop. Make sure it's free of any towel underneath it. Especially when you're working with a bigger hoop, you have to be careful. Just take your time and don't don't rush it, just make sure. The coast is clear, nothing's gonna get sewn in that's not supposed to be sewn in. And before you start your machine, you can slide a piece of tear away. And this too depends on the density of the design and how heavy your towel is. Sometimes I don't use any more stabilizer under my hoop. Last night I put some stabilizer on this one because I had already done it without it I wanted to see the difference so this one once my hoop was in the machine and ready to go before I started the machine I slid a piece of, of tear away this is like a medium tear away it can be regular tear away or it can be a wash away tear away so I like the wash away tear away because um, when you wash the towels the tear away in the open areas will disappear, will dissolve pretty much. 
and but there will still be a little bit left underneath the stitches it you know just to lend a little extra support but this set when I did it I didn't use any tear away underneath this was just pure uh, water soluble stabilizer so now that it's all finished there is no stabilizer in it so it's a little softer and and it's got the tool I really think it'll hold up just perfectly fine I've done it before and they hold up just fine so um, you might uh, if you want to play it safe use a tear away just slide some tear away and it doesn't have to be the wash away um, but if you want it to disappear from between the opened areas then this would be a good one and this also is from um, all stitch it feels like it feels just like tear away it looks like tear away and it tears nicely but it's got a kind of a fluffiness on the surface you can almost it's a little softer and when you tear it it's really delicate it tears off super easy so as opposed to the other tear away it's a little crispier and um, uh, crispier or crisper crisper and um, and the surface is a lot more smooth almost like a regular piece of paper so um, and I think this one said I don't know I think it said 1.5 on the package from all stitch so it's just something I like to use um, I think this one I just forgot to use it but it, it worked out fine I don't remember why I didn't use it but um, then I decided to go ahead and, and put it under this one just to be able to show you all right so here's let me show you one that's been stitched stitched now I told you some of my designs actually come with a basting stitch did you know that the uh, current alphabet has a basting stitch built in so but if you don't need a basting stitch all you do is skip the first color and just go on to the design this is the um, the uh, basting stitch I, I kind of I stuck this in my big hoop in the empty area so what I did was I stitched my basting stitch so that I could see where my design was gonna stitch. I found the center and stuck my towel down. And then I stitched the basting stitch again to hold my towel and my sandwich down. And this is how it looks when it's all done before I do any removing of the stabilizers. Yes. Uh, Karen wants to know again if you uh, cut the tool after you're done stitching. And also Tammy wants to know the brand of your wash away, uh, tear away uh, stabilizer. Uh, it's. It came from all stitch and it's the 1.5 weight um, I don't think it has a brand it's just what all stitch sells so they describe their stuff pretty well so just look under tear away and wash away tear away and I'm sure you will find it so here I'm, I'm moving faster because I didn't realize so much time has passed already it's just too much fun talking to you all and um, I just love it's like having you here and having my friends visit and uh, friends who want to see what I've been doing. All right, so here's my basting stitch. I clip the corners because that makes it really easy to pull that bobbin thread once the corners are clipped. It's easy to pull it straight then uh, easier than trying to make that corner as you're pulling the, the thread out. So just clip the corners first. And I don't have a securing stitch in my basting stitch but the machine adds it so it just doesn't do what I tell it to do when it comes to the basting so even though I don't want it to secure a basting stitch it still does it so I have to remove the knot and I have two bobbin threads here because the first one was to to uh, stitch the empty frame of the basting and then the second one was to actually stitch down my towel. So I'm just pulling out the bobbin thread. See, once the corners are clipped, it's a cinch to just, it's just a piece of cake. While you're doing that, Di wants to know if you use rayon or poly on towels. I use polyester. It's much more durable than rayon. Rayons are beautiful threads, but they are not very strong fibers. They also can bleed. 
because of the dyeing process and the kind of dyes that they have to use. They also tend to break a lot in the machine. I mean, especially the darker colors because they have to be processed so much to get that dark color in there that it weakens the fibers. And so I have rayon threads, but I never use them. Plus, the polyesters are, are much more durable than, um, than the rayons as far as wash and wear. All right, so I've, I've got these, uh, got two threads going here. So I'm removing the basting stitch. This is my wash away tear away. I think I locked a couple of my threads here, so I'm trying to grab them. I think I got them. All right, so the other side should just have these. Now because my design is the same, it's the sparse, it's the same size as the sewing limitation. The basting stitch will sometimes get stitched down, not stitched down, but stitched over. There's a difference. So just clip one side of it and the other side will pull right out. So it may feel locked, but if you clip one side of it, the other side pulls right out. So you're not damaging your embroidery or doing anything at all to your actual embroidery. It just comes right out of there. All right, so you tear away the, um, oh my goodness, I still have a basting stitch here. All right, so this tear away, like I said, it tears like paper. It's just so delicate. Comes right out. I'm doing this quickly because my video is getting long. And then this is my wash away. These are just the basting stitches. All right, so you wanna be careful. So I usually do this. And these are duckbill scissors. I don't wanna cut my towel or poke anything. So I just, this is wash away, remember? So I'm just gonna cut close. It doesn't have to be exact. And if this is for a gift, then I'll just cut it pretty so that it's, it'll still make a pretty presentation. Most people wash their towels before they use them anyway, so this won't be a problem at all. All right, so I've trimmed away the excess uh, water soluble, tri trimmed off my basting stitches. There's the back. Now the front. So the front has the tool on top. Do not tear away the salvi first. Save that for last, yes. Jan wants to know if you, you can use Vileen WSS on kitchen towels as well as of instead of tear away, or instead of tear away. Uh, yeah, if the towel is, uh, yeah, and just use, um, well, it depends on the, the weight of the towel because kitchen towels are sometimes a little bit lighter, a little bit softer. So you might still need tear away. It'll just depend on the design. And yes. Patricia wants to know if you use the same method when you do the neckline towels. The Your beach things, I think, is with, what she's thinking of. With, I can't remember. The instructions should say, I, I, my mind isn't going there right now. I'm trying to think. Um, I don't think so because you have to trim the towel away and then you would have all that knitting in the way. I can't remember, but the directions will tell you if it, if it needs to have that done. I don't think so. Not in that case. Um, so here I'm trimming and I'm not going around fussy cutting. I'm just kind of pulling the tool. When you stretch the tool away from the from the stitching line, you, you're kind of stretching it, and when you close the scissors a little bit, it just kind of cuts itself or tears away. And um, you don't want to just pull it because sometimes it tears and sometimes it just it's pulling your threads, and you don't want to damage the embroidery. But you don't have to fussy cut it. You can just kind of and I'm using these so they don't get caught in my threads and damage my embroidery or the towel. But because I have the salvi underneath, 
I don't have to hassle with the loops in the towel. Oh my goodness. First time I did that, I thought, no way, I'm never doing that again. And then I thought, why don't I put the tool on top of this hollow V? And then I have a barrier between my scissors and the towel. It makes it so much more fun. Uh, yes. Yo-Yo wants to know, uh, I think you said this before, if you wash the towels before you give them as gifts. And then uh, Jeanette wants to know, she's new to this type of work and wants to know if you will be doing any other future sessions on this. Um, Video sessions. I, if there's still a lot of unanswered questions, we could probably do a review. Um, but this video is available, it's going to be available on YouTube so you can watch it again as often as you need to. And you can take notes or just pause it or uh, however um, works for you. Uh, it'll be available for you for whenever you're wanting to try this and just follow along. You can just pause the video as you work if, uh, if you want. Um, so I know it's hard to see, but all, all I'm doing is pulling firmly on the tool and just kind of sliding my scissors in there. And these are nice sharp scissors. Sometimes you don't even have to close the scissors. It kind of cuts right through the tool. And the thing about the tool is because it's almost invisible, you don't have to be exactly right up to the stitching line. So, and, and when you're pulling it, it's stretching it, you trim it, and it kind of shrinks back down because you, those, you, you were stretching it and elongating those, uh, those uh, little uh, uh, loops, you know, those little diamonds that it's made up of. So there's no fussy cutting here. It's just go around and around. I'm not going inside the scroll work. I'm just kind of rounding out around the scroll work. And Patricia wants to know if you need to use matching thread in the bobbin so the towel is reversible, would you use the same method? I don't recommend using matching thread. I just don't think it's necessary. Here it is without matching thread. So um, I think it makes it heavier and hard uh, I just don't recommend matching thread when, when you're embroidering, doing regular embroidery. Um, you can, but I just, I can't really give you the pros and cons of that, except that it makes the embroidery bulky. And uh, I, don't, I don't like that idea, so I just don't do that. Um, okay, so now that my tool is turned away from the perimeter, um, I don't take it out of here because I don't want these loops to bloom and kind of make my embroidery, the details in the embroidery disappear. So I just, I leave the tool, that's the whole point of the tool, is for the open areas to kind of be under control and your design keeps that definition even after the towel's been washed repeatedly. And then all you do with the uh, salvia is gently pull inward towards the design gently and if it doesn't tear with a gentle pull then then tears pull sideways so that it tears along the line but generally speaking that's how it works and there you have it Judy wants to know uh, does the tool match the towel or can you or do you always use white I use uh, or can I, you always use white uh, if you're doing dark towels or some other color, they do sell tool in different colors. I would say try and, and get a color that blends. It, it's not going to be an exact match in color, but because it's so invisible, um, you know, if you have a dark blue and they have, you know, uh, a similar blue, I, it'll blend. I mean, they just have so many colors available. I would recommend trying to blend. Unless you're trying to do something creative, you can also do... You know, maybe a sparkly tool or something. Just get creative and do something else with it. And uh, and notice, even though this alphabet has that applique center um, that I show on on the regular letters that I've stitched out for the um, as the releases have come out, um, you don't have to use the the fabric in the center. You can just skip that and just stitch it like a regular design. And um, and that's how you do a towel. Um, and for, for giving as a gift, no, I don't pre-wash it because I, I might just trim this a little bit closer and 
a little bit uh, closer around the edges or maybe with a little bit of a damp cloth remove some of the excess I just don't want it to be hard and, and stiff but I would just uh, remove a little bit of it around the edges to make it look a little more more um, take it on more of the shape of the design and uh, and just let my recipients know that just you know these are new towels so you may want to wash them before you use them and which people do anyway and um, and that's it. If they were for us, I'd throw them in the washer and, and oh, and I will, I will, before I give them, I will go ahead and put a cloth over this because um, when you iron with a hot iron, that, uh, that uh, violin will melt and pucker. So cover it with a, with a uh, protective cloth and iron it to set those threads in there and you are ready to go. So I hope that covers all of the questions you might have had. And um, let's see, what else? I think that was it. I, I hope I answered all the questions that were important to you. Um, if we feel the need, we'll do a review or something in the future. But this video will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, Sonia Showalter. Just go to YouTube and um, put in Sonia Showalter. You'll see our channel there. Um, uh, it should be up by the end of the day today, unless we have technical difficulties, but at the latest tomorrow morning. These videos are usually uploaded by the end of the same day. Couple of last minute questions. Uh -huh. uh, Patricia wants to know, uh, what are you working on next? What's your new project? And Linda, um, Joanne, uh, let's see, Patricia, sorry, die. <laughs> I would uh, like to know what you mean when you say set the threads. When, when you iron something, if you ever curl your hair, you're, you're reshaping those fibers. Um, you know, you're, you're rearranging the molecules. Uh, and I'm not a scientist. I'm just saying things that make sense to me. Um, but when you iron something, it's, and those threads are being pressed into to submission um, under that the hot iron. And... I think it's set, you know, as the threads wrap around the bottom threads, the top threads are kind of like this, you know, you take a hot iron to it and you're kind of locking them in, I think. And I think that keeps them from uh, doing funky things like getting too loose or whatever. I, I just think it, it sets it into the fibers so much nicer and sets them for a longer life, I think. Especially when it's just plain cottons and things, I think it, it just helps the embroidery uh, look prettier uh, for a longer period of time. I think that's it then. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope you learned a lot actually. And uh, let us know what you, what you do with it. And, and if you stitch some towels, show us your pictures. But uh, remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel so even when you miss our live videos, you can uh, catch them there uh, after the fact and you can watch them as often as you need to. Thank you for watching. We love you all and we'll see you soon.